Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here today. I'm on a foraging expedition with Jerusalem's chief foragess. Uh, I think that's a word, right? We're going to lift it, which is on the outskirts of Jerusalem. This place definitely has a sort of semi-tragic history. It was a depopulated Palestinian village, um, but it's now just a natural park on the outskirts of Jerusalem. And there's amazing foraging opportunities here. And she's gonna, Adara is gonna teach us all about the plants that can be picked here. Yeah. So I was I was doing about saving money and then I started like writing about it and people said can you teach us and I'm like I can't teach this I'm not a teacher they're like just try and that was 11 years ago and I haven't looked back since because people begged me to do it again and fortunately I realized that I might not be a formal person but I have a lot of fun teaching. It's called pasta con los sardes. I don't know how to pronounce it. Sarde, Sarde, I can't say it. It's made with sardines and wild fennel and currants and pasta and parmesan or breadcrumbs I don't remember which one and um yeah, we're not making that, we're making something else, a different uh, Italian Italian uh, pasta dish with this. So we have to pick some of these, um, and if you can, pick, um, not, the, not the hard parts, that's what I was saying, not oh, the hard okay. parts. Um, so wild fennel, um, it is an ancestor of the fennel that we buy in the supermarket, um, and it is good for upset stomachs, and it just tastes good in general if you don't hate the taste of fennel. Do you see this one over here? Yeah. Um, it is a wild plant that is edible that you find in the supermarket this would have to shut feet any guess what plant that is this is a more mature form of it this, I, you can't eat it at this stage but this is what it looks like when it's overgrown and mature in the winter you look for a plant like this usually it's not behind bushes so it's easier to tell you find one like this look on the ground and you will find asparagus growing like regular asparagus they're slightly thinner than usual and what you need to know about this asparagus is that it's um it dries out quickly, so it doesn't stay well in the fridge. Um, you want to eat it immediately the same day, but it's really, really good stuff. And it's fun trail nibbles. I don't find it all over Jerusalem, but the lift is a perfect place to find it. Okay. Okay. Now we're going down here. Okay. So lettuce is in the, um, in the Danlin family, and it's called the Lactusiae family. Um, lacto coming from the word milk, like lac um, lactose. Um, it's called that because everything in this family, when you pick it, has like this white sap. Um, this one you're not going to find as well because, oh, you do see that. You see that white sap over there? It's all dried out, but you still see that white sap when you, um, when you pick it. Um, so everything in this family has flowers that look like a dandelion. White sap when you pick it, and usually they're bitter. This is actually one of the exceptions that are not bitter. No, a different family has white sap. Not everything has white sap is in that family. There's also a poisonous family that has white sap, but this was, um, this is a different one. <laughs> okay, called Hawthorne. Have you heard of Hawthorne before? No, no. Um, like Nathaniel Hawthorne. Right. Um, the, fl the flower, I mean, sorry, the fruit are edible. In Hebrew, it's called ozrar. Um, the fruit are going to be, um, the fruit are going to be ready in the end of the summer. Sometimes they're yellow, sometimes they're red. The fruit kind of tastes like apples, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, they taste, um, they're like slightly mealy also. They're very good for your heart. Um, apparently, they're good for if your heart is too, like your heart, uh, if your heart rate is too high or too low, it's good at balancing it out. When these are ripe, yeah, they're, um, they're, they're tasty. They taste like, uh, like for oh, years. They're mostly native to here, or move there, or from there and move here. This um, plants don't have the ability to do that, so plants have to have other ways to protect themselves. They protect themselves by being poisonous, being too hard to eat, being poisonous, being too hard to eat, being prickly, being so prolific that even if they die, there's so much more of them, or looking like poisonous plants. So often the ones that look the least edible are usually edible. Most of the thorny plants are edible because they have thorns to protect themselves. They don't also need to be poisonous. This land over here, Shemshon the foodie, I assume you've eaten these before. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, you know this already. Yeah, they also grow. These are capers. Oh. You do not want to eat them at, like this oh. um, because capers have um, really bitter mustard oil in them. The entire caper plant is edible. The Gemara talks about it, what broccoli make in each part. Um, in order to eat it, what you need to do is you need to soak it in water. Every day it changes the water for about three days. Uh, they change color from like this purplish green to like this mottled white and green, like white and olive green uh, color. And then you pickle it either with vinegar and water or like a salt, um, salt and water, like um, lact uh, lacto fermentation. And then the flower opens up like that. Oh, and beautiful. Well, this is actually a messed up flower. Yeah, the, yes, these, are, these flowers look alien-like almost. They're one of the most unique flowers here. Um, and then, if, um, and then they turn into fruit. The fruit of the caper plant is called a caper berry. It kind of looks like little cucumbers. 
and it has lot, um, like this big, sometimes it could get bigger, but they're better when they're smaller. They've got a bunch of seeds in them. They taste similar to capers, but more spicy. Capers are actually very hard to grow from seed, but once it's growing, it's almost impossible to kill. Barley and wheat, if you see the difference, I mean, yep. wheat. Okay, barley is kind of like, wheat, I, I, the way I describe it, wheat kind of looks like, you know, there's a challah, you know, to uh, a braid with like, with uh, spikes coming off at both sides. Whereas barley kind of is more like a six braided, you know, it's the, the braid looks is on all sides. Um, right, so wheat and barley, they grow upward. Um, wild oats grow downward. This is already dried out. You're not gonna be able to get the seeds near the seeds are gone, but this is still beneficial um, because this is called oat straw at this stage. Um, you said hay, and yes, oat straw is basically like hay. Um, if you make it into tea, it's actually very good for, um, it's very calming. in there. Hi guys, I'm here with uh, two amazing people. We've got Daniel Rosehill, he's my partner in crime for many exciting thing, adventures in Jerusalem. And we've got Adara here. I'm trusting my life with her. She's taking me to the middle of the forest, deep down near the river gorge here. And it's just very dangerous. We almost fell a few times going. It's a very steep decline here. Um, are we going to survive this? All these plants we want you want us to eat, is it going to work out? Um, it's going to, not just going to work out, you're going to actually be pleasantly surprised at how good the food is going to be. Okay, I've um, got life insurance, one million shekels. Is that enough or should I call my broker now? I think it should be enough. I think you're going to want to, um, you want to get rid of the life insurance because you're not going to need it after this. This is a fig tree. We all know that, um, that figs are edible, right? Mm -hmm. um, now when you pick figs, the sap that comes out is white. It is not in the dandelion family. It's a different family that has white sap. Um, now this sap has a few different benefits. It is medicinal. It is an antifungal, a really strong antifungal, antibacterial. Um, also this white sap could be used to curdle milk and to make cheese, but it has a slightly bitter taste, so we're not gonna use that in ours, but you can make cheese using the sap from the fig tree. And the last thing about them is if you take them and you wrap food with them, you could bake them with keeping the moisture in like um like you would uh you know with aluminum foil or parchment mm -hmm. paper uh but it's biodegradable if you see this is why it's a poisonous look like if you see the seeds kind of look like fennel seeds that's why we say there's a poisonous look alike but no poisonous smell alike because it does not smell like fennel um when it's younger it looks kind of like parsley See, if you see something that looks like wild parsley, do not eat it! I mean, it smells the... like feet, bro. <laughs> What's the plant called today? Well, wild... Uh, this is poison hemlock. Poison, why? This is what they used to kill Socrates. Yep. Hey, to think of a duck's foot or a goose's foot, um, it's called in English, goose foot is one of its names. In Latin, it's chenopodium, which means foot of a goose. Mm -hmm. And in Hebrew, it's called kaf avaz, which means foot of a goose. Mm -hmm. It's one of those names that, among different languages. Okay, so this plant over here, yesterday, it's one of the few greens you find like growing prolifically in the summer in Israel. I was looking for this, especially when I was coming down to look and I, <clears throat> I only found this plant, but I said, fine, we'll use this plant, whatever greens we'll find over here, we'll do something with that. And then yesterday I was in Jerusalem and I, I hit jackpot. I saw one plant this tall. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention. It's officially called Gusva, but its other name is Lamb's Quarters. That's a name I use for it. Um, I don't know why it's called lamb's quarters. Some people also call it wild spinach. Um, one plant, I mean, you see how small this is, but one plant could grow this tall. Right. Um, the hairs have, um, have stuff that sting you, mm -hmm. but they're not poisonous. If you see something that maybe you think might be this, but it stings you, it's nettles mm -hmm. and it's also edible. So you don't have to worry about that. We'll get to nettles a different time because this is not in season but um, the leaves don't look actually webbed. Now there's another plant called annual mercury that looks similar to this, except it doesn't have, this is more concave, whereas those are convex. Um, outside, if you see like, this is more webbing and the other one is kind of more like a laced oily edge. So Lifta also has kind of a checkered historical history. This was actually a Palestinian majority, almost exclusively village that was depopulated after the foundation of the State of Israel. And you can see here, it's now a nature reserve in Israel. But you can see all around us here, uh, houses are actually abandoned, our properties. And you can actually see behind me here, these coils of pretty crazy uh, razor wire that are intended to stop people from coming into these rooms. And they're just all around here as well as a spring. So, um, you know, there's definitely two sides to the Israeli-Palestinian narrative. And um, Lifta has been likened to the Pompeii 
of the Palestinian narrative. And uh, so it's kind of also, I try to keep that in mind whenever I'm visiting here. That's where the thorns are. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how we take off the thorns. Um, there's also the big thorns, and then there's these tiny little thorns called glochids, um, which are basically invisible ones. I mean, practically invisible ones, and they're hard to get off, so you have to be careful of these. Um, but the young ones, the light green ones, um, you can see them more easily because um, they have the bigger thorns on them and they're soft and they taste like lemony green uh, a cross between lemony green beans and green peppers uh -huh. and we will be making two different things with them and I can't wait to show you so the way we do it this is my favorite way to do it because you can't put these in bags because then the thorns get in I put them in a box like this and then I cut them off like that see now no need to that's my own invention see this is my wow. my own cool foraging uh, hack you, you should patent that <laughs> so we've completed the foraging part of our adventure now. We spent uh, 30 minutes there down in Lifta uh, under Adara's guidance picking out plants and now we've brought all the things we foraged back in our little foraging bowls and we're actually preparing a sit-down banquet on one of these uh, pull-out tables here. So what we're currently cooking is palak paneer. It's a mixture of food that Adara's brought from her house as well as things that we've uh, foraged. When that's all the way off, then we're gonna rinse them and then uh, chop them up to cook them. Oh, and then you have to know around the edges, you actually have to cut off the edges because you can't get the thorns fully off the edges. I'm cooking rice noodles, they're almost finished. Um, we're gonna have them with wild fennel and um, fake sausage, beyond sausage, and cheese that we're making. Um, it's, uh, um, it's an Italian, we call the, um, the wild fennel finocchio in, uh, in Italian. And uh, we're, gonna, we're making cheese. That's going to go in the fennel. We're, um, it's, uh, paneer cheese, right? Paneer cheese, yes. Um, we're waiting for the water to boil for that. Um, and we are also making a um, palak paneer um, Indian curry. And we're going to make lemon butter cactus. And we're going to make a cactus chickpea tomato pepper salad. How much of these ingredients has, have you foraged and what have you brought? I brought tomatoes, peppers, onions, rice, milk, noodles, and spices. And the rest is all coming from nature. That's amazing. Wow. Um, 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 tell me if it splatters you at all. I'm gonna do it slowly so it's not splattering. Is it splattering at all? No. So, a little. So, smile. Cheese. Hold on, let me push up my camera. My phone. This is rice. We foraged the rice in the fields of China. Um, <laughs> and this is, um, this is palak paneer cheese. Um, it's made with lamb's quarters and paneer cheese that we made ourselves. And tomatoes and onions and garam masala. This is a cactus paddle salad with chickpeas and peppers and tomatoes. This is a fennel and fake sausage and pasta dish. And this is lemon butter cactus. And this is the oat straw tea that we also forage from. Hi friends, uh, we've been through this big adventure now. We've walked through nature, we've been to springs, we've been to in a forest. We've picked all these healthy, healthy foods. We've cooked them together. And it's come out into an interesting vegetarian dairy meal. And there's a lot of flavors here which are very wild, very unfamiliar, and I'm also not familiar with the Indian food. So it's been an amazing experience with the Dara, and uh, I certainly can recommend it. Um, um, I was scared, I'm still scared, but I'm going to eat it at, at the moment, I feel good. So, cheers. Okay, so we've just finished the uh, dining part of the experience, and it was absolutely, everything was absolutely incredible. This is the um, spin on palak paneer that unlike your typical palak paneer is made from ingredients found right here in Lifta in Jerusalem. This is cactus. I never had any idea what cactus would, be, would look like. It's actually very tasty. This was cooked in butter and it's a little bit stringy as well. Like a bit, it reminds a bit like Malakia, the Egyptian dish. And uh, we have some uh, rice here as well. Everything was absolutely fantastic. This was an absolutely amazing experience. We spent three hours connecting uh, with the uh, the plants here and then cooking them afterwards. I think if you're interested in sustain more sustainable ways to eat, a cool experience in Jerusalem or you're a tour group visiting uh, the city, then I highly, highly recommend going on one of Adara's tours. And uh, you can, uh, classes, and then at the end of it, you can eat delicious food like this. What more could you ask for? It was really nice having a group um, along to learn about our foraging stuff. 
Um, if you want to learn more about my foraging adventures, check out my new website, adarapeskinshalem.com. That is A-D-A-R-A-P-E-S-K-I-N-S-H-A-L-E-M.com. Or check out my other website, pennylessparenting.com, where I have a lot of write-ups about how to identify different wild plants.